His name was Thomas Salmon. He's the first psychiatrist in any American army. Right around 1910, he comes to New York and he has this vision of uh, public health psychiatry, trying to keep people from becoming mentally ill and also how to really treat people with mental illness in a way that would cure them or mitigate their symptoms. So he's a forward thinker in this regard. And he's even more of a forward thinker because he anticipates the social cost of the war on American society. The first thing he wants to do is be sure that people who can't stand the mental rigors of war won't get drafted. So he devises some systems for figuring out how you can tell whether somebody is mentally fragile, in effect. But more importantly, he really devises a, a groundbreaking, what he calls forward psychiatry, which is hospitals, psychiatric hospitals, and a triage system separate for psychiatric symptoms that's literally right at the front. Um, the U.S. Army Medical Corps uh, struggles with him because they don't really believe in psychiatric wounds. Simon called it war neurosis. He refused to call it shell shock because he was an empiricist and many of the people who exhibited these symptoms had never been subjected to artillery, so shell doesn't make much sense. Um, but he saw this war neurosis as a perfectly legitimate way to respond to the terrible trauma of that kind of combat, which no American had ever seen. He tried to persuade the people in the U.S. Army Medical Corps that this wasn't shirking or cowardice or uh, some other kind of way of getting out of service, but a separate physical and physiological response. This was the first systematic attempt to really build psychiatric services into traumatic treatment. And one of the things that's most impressive to me about it is how risky it is, how close to the front. He had a triage system that would bring soldiers to these specialized psychiatric locations, which were sometimes no more than a tent, and sometimes no more than about three or four kilometers from the most active fighting in the Mozargan battles. He had a protocol for each man brought in from the front who was suspected of these symptoms. People who were unable to speak, unable to move, frozen, uh, stammering, uh, shaking so hard that they couldn't stand up. He sets up the earliest occupational therapy shops. He sets up um, weaving and toy making and all sorts of things so that the men can, can do something as well as you know, talk about what's going on with them. They put on plays. They have you know, this sort of interesting and strange alternate universe in this psychiatric hospital. It's quite striking to read this stuff from almost 100 years ago because it reads like looking at the New York Times right now. The same kinds of troubles that we have with funding for veterans' benefits, the same kind of uh, anxiety or resistance to mental health parity for um, medical treatment within the VA. These things are absolutely fresh when you read them in his letters and, and his speeches. And it's distressing to see that there was this uh, structure and plan which actually did seem efficacious. It was a very, very low rate of suicide. There was uh, real empirical data that he was able to keep the force healthy kind of what might have been if we had followed a different kind of road uh, into thinking about psychiatry in a different sort of way. We're at the cusp of seeing a huge mental health crisis in returning veterans that, that we're just beginning to get a hold of. Um, and Salmon's idea was that we should anticipate these things and fund them and think about them as a normal part, if you can use that kind of terminology, for the, the cost of war.